Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro. We saw Tenet. New Christopher Nolan film. You know, every every Nolan film is, is just a must-see. Nolan is one of the most interesting blockbuster filmmakers we have. You sit in a Christopher Nolan movie, you're going to be entertained, but you're also going to think. You're going to get inside your head and you're going to say, hmm, this goes here and this fits here. and Oh, that's what this happened. That's what this happened. You have to like wrap your brain around him a little bit. But he also usually is good at bringing in the character to those films and giving them emotional resonance. Inception did this very well. Tenet is very much a sort of puzzle movie. You know, if you like to rewatch your movies and try to figure out what happened on the surface, you'll get it. But in my mind, there's two types of complex, right? I would describe a movie like Cynic in New York or like a Charlie Kaufman movie as being complex, maybe both in terms of plot and in terms of like, you know, you can dissect it and you can get themes out of it. In my opinion, after seeing this, the, no matter the amount of repeat viewings, it won't unlock anything about the characters, about themes, deeper meanings. It's very much a movie that operates on the surface level. And in that way, I think it does deliver. Sure, on the surface, as, as an action as film? As an action film, it is, I think it's definitely above average. Great car chases, the big bombastic practical effects, some great hand-to-hand -hand combat that, you know, throwing in that reverse stuff, I think makes it a little more original and interesting. To meme this film, if someone asked Chris Nolan, how, how big of action set pieces do you want this one to have? Chris Nolan said yes. The locations, the amount of, like, beautiful spots in the world that they go to just to film, like, scenes, like... The, the complications, my God, if I were a producer on this film, it would be a nightmare. I'd be, I'd be like, you want me to shoot a scene where? You want me to destroy what? Nolan's trying to top himself in a, in a very superficial way. Just how much giant shit can I have in this movie? So therefore, there's some action spectacle. It has every vehicle, cars, planes, boats, boats, a type of sailboat that, do, that I don't know, a mega sailboat, if you will. It's more, it's more like a hover in catamaran i didn't it was unexplained it was a strange vehicle for them to choose and i don't know how the character knew how to operate it the action is how most people will be able to enjoy this movie there were parts that i could shut my brain off a little bit and just kind of sit back and enjoy the spectacle because no one delivers on it the cinematography the editing it's very good it's when we get into just about everything else that the movie starts to fail in ways that other Nolan films have succeeded. To me, there's a distinction between a film that makes you go, oh, duh, and a film that makes you go, oh, duh. And this one made me go, oh, what? And the, kind of the whole movie, I was, just, I was a wah-ing. And at the end, I was, I, I threw my, I was kind of like, I don't understand. I'm not going to understand. If I watched again, I probably still wouldn't get it. And I don't really care to understand. It was beyond like, I don't, understand like logistically what's happening which maybe i could figure out more ago even if i dove into the concept of what's happening it wouldn't make sense because it's so unintuitive that if you try to dive into it it's like no no, no whoa, whoa 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 buddy like we're not we're not taking it that seriously are we like don't try to think too deep about this concept but it's also just walking out of the film and being like i didn't really care about anything that happened in that movie and i'm going to be less charitable than you and say the action scenes for me, they were entertaining. They made me stop thinking. They made me get out of my head, which was the best part of the film. But the action scenes didn't do much for me. For example, some of the hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes, there's things going in reverse. There's things going forwards. They're going at the same time. I cannot fully enjoy those scenes because I am just not able to have this bird's eye view of like what's happening. And so I find myself accepting that this is just kind of a jumbled thing. And there's not gonna be any real like clarity on how this is happening or where these things are coming from or what the plan is this way, what the plan is that way. I gave up on trying to have that kind of clarity. And that's a little bit disappointing to me because I just wanted the film in so many ways to be more clear and I felt like it could have been. It seemed needlessly complex. It was all about how complex can we make this plot. The concept of inversion is only one piece of how complicated this movie is. And I just feel like all the other pieces of, of complexity felt unnecessary. I would have liked to see Nolan hone in on the more basic conceptual ideas. Yeah. You know, let us get a really good grasp on the basics and yeah. then flesh out your characters and make us care about the people in it. 
because he spent so much time trying to overcomplicate this script, he forgot to take into account if the average audience member could absorb it in two hours and 30 minutes and maybe even in two or three viewings. If you're gonna confuse people, I think you have to have a really good reason to do it. And there's plenty of films that confuse me where it makes sense. I watch it again, oh my God, that makes sense. This film, I could not see that happening and I wouldn't go back to it again to try to be unconfused. What I would do instead is like I did, I read about what happened in the movie that I didn't understand. Now I kind of get what happened in the movie but it doesn't change the fact that personally, I didn't enjoy the experience that much. The reason comes like purely down to, there was a missed opportunity here to have any semblance of character development within the protagonist. We were talking about this on the way home and we like discovered <laughs> a nugget that was completely missing from the film. And we went, oh my God, like this was almost handed to him on a silver platter. What most people would do with this idea is they'd say, ah, oh, what would a character who can reverse time do? What would they do with that power? They would change something that happened in their past. Everybody has regrets. You know, maybe like their son died and they have to go back in time, change that that happened. I don't know, but there's none of it in this movie. And I don't know how there's none of that. In Inception, they have this very well fleshed out. He wants to see his kids again and everything he has to do for this story is about seeing his kids again. And also just like getting over his wife. There's hardly any way to relate to this movie on an emotional level. Now, Elizabeth Debicki's character is kind of this, but the weird thing about this character is that they just make up for things that should have been present in John David Washington's character. Yep. Like his spiritual goal is through her. It's like that he wants to see her fulfill her spiritual goal. She actually does have a little bit of a you know, making up for a thing that she regrets. But again, why is this something that we have to have a different character to do? Make the main character interesting. In the beginning of the film, when we're introduced to this character, one of the first things we learn is that he is somebody who is willing to run into the burning building to save others. That's a great trait for a hero to have. Unfortunately, it doesn't make you very like human. It just makes him like a very unselfish person who will do what it takes to save the world. For example, Leonardo DiCaprio in Inception was a, in many ways, a selfish person who would go out of the way to try to fulfill his personal desires and it would get in the way of his mission. And that would make for an interesting character. John David Washington's character is so underwritten on the most basic screenwriting 101 level. Like he's literally just lacks like a fundamental spiritual goal. And, and what is his it. name? What's his name in the movie? The protagonist. <laughs> it's almost, it, it, it is funny. It's fucking funny. Some of the exposition, like you finish an accident scene and you were kind of like on a little bit of a high from it. And then immediately after there's just a walk and talk going through like the most fancy, like insane places in Europe and explaining stuff. You're like, what, 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 what are we? Oh, this is part of the plot now. What's this? And they're explaining it very fast. It's hard to hear what they're saying. There's a problem with the sound mixing in this movie. Let's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To get into the sound mixing, there's just like random sub bass. Like yeah. there's just times oh, where yeah. it's just characters like doing very domestic things. And then it's just, <laughs> and then it's just like, like, and I'm like, where, why is this here? Where's this coming from? Yeah. It felt like it could have had good sound. And then, the sound people came in and were like, let's let's like just master this sound. Let's get a track where we bring the levels up for everything and, you know, the bass levels go up and all the levels go up and just kind of got muddy. In Inception, when they explain things, there's actually a, a good chance that you'll understand what they're saying and that you'll be <laughs> like, oh yeah, oh yeah, cool. In this movie, the idea is so abstract sometimes that they have to just say, D don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, okay? This is just how yeah, that I is. Say, this just, is how that is. Just feel don't it. worry about it, all right? You can call me a dummy, and I, I definitely felt like a dummy <laughs> in the movie. I was, like, trying to take notes. I have my phone on, like, the lowest brightness setting possible, and I was trying to, like, take notes in case I needed to go back to stuff because I heard this movie is hard to get. And I actually would not recommend going in with that mindset because you'll just kind of make yourself crazy. You'll drive yourself a little bit insane. If somebody came out of this movie understanding it, I would, I would just be very impressed by them. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think very few people will walk out and be like, I know what I, I know what that was all about. I feel like I got a decent amount of it and I maybe got like the gist of it. Go in, try to under, your best to understand it, 
But also just, you know, when the action's happening, like appreciate the action for what it is. Nolan does do it like nobody else. I agree that that's how you should enjoy the movie. It's good advice, but I would still push back and say that good action is when you can understand what's happening. There's actually an inherent like impossibility of understanding like the, what is going on in an action scene because you'd have to know what's being planned on both sides. Like from the beginning to end, they're going both. Like there's no attempt to even get us to that level of understanding because it would be impossible. Some of the action scenes, particularly like the bigger one in the end, came across as very like muddy. I wasn't sure who was like shooting who. Some people will give Nolan a lot of credit and say, oh, well that's just because Nolan's the mastermind and he knows it and we're not worthy. I would maybe call that like a communication error. Like if Nolan can't get his, the basic ideas of like what is occurring, yeah. even while Aaron Taylor Johnson like it has a whiteboard in front of him. Again, like you have to have a really good reason if you're going to lose your audience. And so either he doesn't know that he's losing his audience or he thinks he has a great reason, but he doesn't. If I watched this movie 10 times and I studied it and I got a degree in it, you yeah, really I wouldn't it. like it more. I mean, there would be some things that I'd be like, oh, that's actually kind of yeah. cool. Oh, that's You'd appreciate clever. it more. Yeah, I would appreciate the cleverness. Uh, I would appreciate some of the reveals. But again... We have a lack of character here. I want to bring up another film called Primer. It's notoriously like impossible to figure out. And there have been like internet people who will try to like make a map of this film. And it's like an indie time travel movie, but it's very interesting. And I accept that I do not get what the hell was going on timeline wise, logistically in that movie, but I didn't care. And it was still a good movie. And that one's even more complicated than this film. There's just something about it that captured my imagination more. And the reason this film doesn't capture my imagination is because, again, it doesn't play with that idea. Like, what if you could go back in time? What if you could go backwards? Would you like change something? Would you fix something? It just seems like a fundamental question that's kind of missing from this puzzle. I will lend the film a little bit in that it's actually slightly a metaphor for how we should approach the issue of climate change. Yeah. I'm, I don't know if I want to like dissect that, but don't it sort of throws it. that in at the end. And I was kind of like, oh, like that's actually applies to the concept pretty well. Very mm -hmm. much like a subtext. Maybe we can talk about the Oscar potential and also try to like, you know, break down certain elements of the film, like the performances, the score and stuff. Performance wise, like it's it's just like completely out of the conversation as far as awards go. Like I thought all the main performers were good. I think everybody was very good and fun to watch. But yeah, they don't have that much character going on. Elizabeth Debicki has like some more emotional moments and she's good in them. You know, Elizabeth Debicki is probably the best one in the movie and she does have the most to deal with. So Kenneth Bernal, I thought he was good in the sense that like he's a little bit unrecognizable uh, compared to characters that he's played before. At the same time, I'm getting tired of Russian villains. I'm really getting tired of it. The score is is the one thing in the movie maybe that I actually really liked. It didn't fit every moment. Sometimes it was a little overpowering, but I knew even in those moments, like it was kicking ass in a way. And I wanted to listen to that on my own. So I'm actually really looking forward to listening to the score by itself. Some people say that he's just kind of sounds like he's doing a Hans Zimmer thing. And there are times where he does that, but there are also times where he really shows an attention to rhythm that he showed in Black Panther that not many composers do. I really liked the way that he incorporated electronics. I really like the stuttering ones that are like during like the fire truck car scene. There was like a freaking beat in there. I think it's like the it same weird, one that they yeah. used in the Travis Scott song that they did for the movie. So yeah, out of place, but very cool. It was like, oh, I don't know if that was out of place because it was an I, action movie. So I was like, yeah, you play anything during this. Sure. It's fine with me. Could it get nominated? I think that's Maybe. possible. I think that's nomination wise. The movie's best shot is sound because there's a lot of sound. It's very noisy. Mm -hmm. The second best shot, I think it's got to be yeah. visual effects. They combine like reverse and forward elements. And I'm sure there's some harnesses they had to like just, you know, airbrush out of there. I don't know. Does the Academy vote for movies where they appreciate the use of practical effects? They actually didn't do it for Dunkirk. I mean, I, I feel like the plane was not a practical it effect. It was. They actually sent a giant plane into a Good, hangar. Good God. They really did. They, all the okay. explosions were, yeah. But still, I think... There's going to be less movies this year contending for visual effects because all the blockbusters said not to come out. Third, I would say, is probably the score. People are thinking cinematography, maybe? No, I don't think so. I don't think Academy of Voters are going to care about this movie, which matters a lot. 
like Ad Astra, for example, I think it's going to lose most people and that's going to make them less likely to vote for it in any category. Yeah, I mean, I could honestly see this being goose egged, just like The Dark Knight Rises, to be honest. And that was a movie that people were convinced would get sound at the end of the day and it didn't even get that. I think it'll still get sound, though. Yeah, but at the same time, there's a little bit of a sound mixing issue. I think it's a thing where it has a lot, so it'll get it. Also, I don't think it will get art direction. So I'm really just thinking maybe two nominations. And editing, it just would have to be a bigger contender to get editing. And again, people have to care about the movie for it to get editing. Interstellar was a huge hit with the audiences. And the Academy didn't bite. So the, the, the Nolan fanboys are not really in the Academy. The chances for picture, director, screenplay, like... They're out the window. Absolutely gone. Out the window. Not not even touching the list. So in conclusion, I think Nolan has gone a little too far down McComplex Plot's <laughs> lane and has neglected the basic things about character that even if he did like the most cliche sort of things, it would have made the movie better. Nolan is a man of what ifs. You know, what if we told a story this way? What if we explored this? There are enough what ifs explored in this movie that I I know some people will like it because it plays them out in the physical action sense. You see what's happening and it's sometimes spectacular, but it doesn't dive into the heart. You know, there's there's so many what ifs that we could be asking that are at the core of, of human beings and this film does not touch them. For the time that it was on, I mostly did enjoy it. It is an action movie. And as an action movie, it was above average, I would say. So I would give it a 6 out of 10. It's not a bad movie. It had me engaged on on a mental level. So I would go with a 5 on this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Were you big-brained enough to understand this movie?